Hello everyone. Good morning. Am I audible? Yeah, perfect. Okay. So let's uh, begin with the session. Okay. So probably, you know, today will be the last session with respect to exception handling here. Okay. So we have seen, you know, all the different scenarios with respect to exception error and how do we handle them and what is throws keyword as well. Okay. In today's session here, we are just going to talk about a very, very important topic here. Okay. So this will play a major role in your project perspective. Okay. And the topic which we are going to discuss in today's session is something called as custom exception. Okay. So first of all, what is custom exception over here? Okay. I'll give you a couple of scenarios here. Okay. Wherein you'll try to understand here. Okay. Now imagine you are working on a Gmail application. Okay. I repeat you are working on a Gmail application. So now if you want to log in into Gmail, there are two requirements here, right? So yeah, this is Gmail and your requirement is to log in into Gmail. If you want to log in into Gmail, you require two parameters, right? So you require ID and you require password, correct? So now you require the login credentials, right? So now if you want to log in into Gmail over here, First, you will enter the ID. Okay. Imagine as soon as you enter invalid user ID, if you want to log in into Gmail here, and as soon as you enter invalid email ID and try to log in over here, you will get a pop up message telling invalid user ID. Correct. So, internally, you know what happens? See, everyone would have experienced this, right? When you're trying to log in into Gmail or Instagram or Facebook or any application over here. As soon as you enter the email ID, you know, invalid email ID, you'll get a pop-up message called as invalid email ID enter. So internally, you know what is happening over here? Internally, an exception had occurred and that exception was handled and they gave that suitable solution here. It's just not a SOP statement, print statement that the message was displayed. No. Once you try to enter invalid email ID, internally a lot of validation will happen to check if that email id is valid or not so if it is invalid here and custom a custom exception will be invoked an exception will occur the exception is handled and they give that suitable solution over here got it similarly with respect to password you enter invalid password as soon as you enter invalid password over here an exception will occur okay an exception will occur we handle the exception and we give that suitable solution over here. So everywhere, okay, whenever it's about a negative scenario here, uh, you know, exceptions will play a major role. Okay, that all comes internally. Okay, similarly, imagine an ATM project. Okay, you're working on a banking application that is ATM and you are trying to perform some transaction. You're trying to, you know, uh, you know, perform some transaction here. Okay. So as soon as, okay, you want to withdraw 5,000 here. Okay, what is your requirement here? You want to withdraw 5,000 and your account balance is only 2,000 here. Okay, your account balance is 2,000 and you are trying to withdraw 5,000 here. You'll get a pop-up message telling insufficient balance, cannot withdraw so and so amount. But internally what had happened? An exception had occurred. They handled the exception and they gave that suitable pop-up message here. It's just not a pop-up message immediately done here. No, internally there is a lot of validation happening here. Only when that validation is going in negative scenario, false scenario, an exception will occur. They handle it and they give that suitable solution here. So in simple terms here, okay, based on certain projects here, okay, we have to create our own exceptions here. If I'm working on a banking application, some exceptions related to banking I need to create. If I'm working on an e-commerce application, so some exceptions I have to create on my own. If I'm working on a Gmail application, again, a few exceptions I have to create on my own. So the exceptions which we are creating is called as user defined exception or custom exception here. Okay. At times, based on certain projects, you know, the programmer, the developer has to create, okay, few exceptions based on the project. Okay, certain exceptions he has to create on his own. 
so those exceptions are called as custom exception here okay so first of all imagine okay we'll try to work around okay the notes over here okay so what is custom exception here as i told you an exception which we create is called as custom exception clear so now how do we create a custom exception we have certain rules for it okay so we need to follow certain rules for it here okay so just a moment here okay so just a moment i'm just going to freeze my screen okay just a great okay so we just got the basic idea about it right okay so i have a couple of notes over here so that you can uh, you know look at the notes here and you will be able to get it okay so what is custom exception or user defined exception here based on certain projects here okay it is sometimes necessary to create our own exceptions okay and those kind of exceptions which are created by the programmer or the developer is called as custom exception or user defined exception but if you have to create an exception we have to follow certain rules for it okay what are the certain rules here as i told you here okay these are the mandatory rules you have to you know follow first whatever is your exception name you have to create it as a class why because all the exceptions are classes right so if you are creating your own exception you have to create it as a class here okay so we'll go back to my eclipse workspace okay over there we have a project called as exception handling under that let me create a package and the package name is custom exception i write the package name as custom exception so over here if i mean we created a project called as exception handling okay and now we have uh, created a package project called as exception handling and package called as custom exception okay now under that let me create okay a class here let me create a class so i'll click on others and create a class okay okay perfect so now here we will try to understand one example here okay so we will take out some example called as uh, invalid password exception okay so i will create an exception by the name called as invalid password exception okay so first of all whatever is your exception you have to create it as a class so you are trying to work around a gmail application wherein you have to perform login correct user id password so since assume you are working on an uh, login application okay wherein it has a login form and you have to login at times here uh, we might come across an exception called as invalid password exception this exception is your name and you have created as a class and we also know that all the exceptions are subclass of either uh, exception class or runtime exception class so even the exception which you create has to inherit the exception class or runtime exception class why yesterday we saw the different types of exceptions right all the checked exceptions will inherit the exception class and all the unchecked exceptions will inherit the runtime exception class right similarly whatever class you created invalid password exception is my exception name i created it as a class and that class should inherit okay that class should inherit the runtime exception class in order to make it as an unchecked exception if i make it a uh, c class is invalid password exception that is inheriting runtime exception class because this i want to make it as an unchecked exception if i want to make it as a checked exception i have to inherit the exception class clear as of now i'll make it as runtime exception class this is all about it i create a class called as invalid password exception and i'll make sure it is a subclass of runtime exception class clear now here you have one uh, class and the class name is login form here okay that class name is login form and you have your main method main where in my execution always starts from okay so here you know i'll just write it as a uh, string id equals to i'll just write it the id as admin okay and then the password equals to okay password equals to 1 2 3 here so i am trying to uh, work around with the data if id dot equals okay admin and we all know that if there is string okay if there is string here 
we have to always make use of equals method here in order to compare strings here i told you don't make use of double equals okay you have to always make use of equals method because equals method is overridden to compare the content correct so we have to always follow the equals method for comparing the string here and okay and i have to after once the user id is valid here i will check the password here if password okay is password equal to equal to 123 if the password is equal to equal to 123 here so what does it mean here it simply means that sys out login successful i just write it as login successful clear this is all about it okay so i have an if condition wherein if the user id is valid i check the password over here okay and if the password is valid login successful else over here okay what am i supposed to do else it's a negative scenario negative scenario in the sense here we have to create an object of that exception class okay and okay we have to create an object of the exception class and invoke that exception here meaning we have to throw an object clear as i have told you long back here when i tell 10 divided by 0 internally what will happen an object of arithmetic exception is created and that object is thrown clear clear similarly which is the object you know which is the class we have created here invalid password exception obj equals to new invalid password exception i created an object of that specific exception and i have to make use of a keyword called as throw and i have to throw that respective object so i created an object of the exception which i want to invoke and i will tell throw obj so throw is a keyword which is used to invoke an object of exception what is throw here throw is a keyword and the job of this throw keyword is to invoke an object of exception here so this is what we are supposed to understand here okay so this is just a very very simple part which we need to understand see what is throw throw is a keyword in order to invoke an object of exception here okay and generally throw is used with only with custom exceptions we create an exception and we have to invoke it explicitly so how can we do it throw object of exception type so you can tell throw new exception name meaning the object of exception or you can create an object of exception and throw that respective object this is one way of doing it otherwise you can tell throw throw you can directly throw that respective object here so anything is fine okay both anything either one thing we you can follow it over here okay so now what is happening over here see when i just you know execute the program here when i just execute the program the output will be login successful why because you know you have entered the valid password and valid user id so if you want to accept dynamically here what can i do here i can just write it as scanner scan equals to new scanner or you can create an object of scanner okay and pass system dot in and pass system dot in and we have to import the scanner class from okay uh, the data here so here I, at the last here once i'm done everything over here you can close this scanner object scan dot close over here so i'm done with the job right so we can make use of scanner class and close it so if i want to accept the user id so i will tell enter user id that id i will store it into a variable called as scan dot next here similarly i will accept the password enter password okay and i will store that uh, password into a variable called as scan dot next in and i check the comparison over here this is all about the entire process so now when i execute it over here just look at the output here what is happening enter user id i write it as admin enter password 1 2 3 see login successful meaning i have entered valid id see admin equals to admin yes is password equal to password yes therefore login successful but now when i execute my program i tell the user id that is admin and the password is i'll get as 125 so as soon as i tell can you see what is happening the exception is occurring where 
exception is occurring in the main method and the exception name is invalid password exception and that is occurring in line number 23. So in line number 23 here, there is an exception over here. Meaning as soon as you enter invalid password, you know, an exception will occur. So once an exception will occur, what are we supposed to do here? So look at the notes over here. So first we have to create an exception. I mean, we have to create an exception object here and we have to invoke that with the help of throw keyword. And then we have to handle it using try and catch block and give that suitable solution. So these two lines are responsible for giving an exception. So those lines I have to write it within the try block and the solution will be written within the catch block here. So how will we write, what will be the exception that will be caught by the catch block? Invalid password exception E here. So I can just write it as invalid password entered. Okay, invalid password entered. So that way, you know, we can do it. So now when I execute the program over here, okay, and when I enter user ID, it's admin. So enter password, it's one, two, three. So login successful. Now again here, once I enter the ID as admin and I enter invalid password, one, two, five. So can you see here, invalid password entered. So I'm just trying to print it over here. But in real time, what will happen, you know, okay, as soon as this is UI, front end, back end, database, everything you'll have. But as of now, I'm just working around with the console and Java, that's it. But once you have a proper front end, proper back end and a proper database over here, this is where in the real time you will implement. So as soon as you enter invalid password, the control goes to the else block, an object of invalid password exception is created and that you will invoke with the help of throw keyword. And that exception is caught by the catch block and that su suitable solution is displayed to the user. It's just not a print statement guys. It's not that we will be coding only in Java, only in Python, only in JavaScript. We will make use of different, different languages, right? So therefore it had that exception has to be fetched from the database and that has to be shown to the user. So that way we are supposed to make use of, okay, the process here. Okay. So basically speaking, okay. What is custom exception? It's very simple. Based on certain projects, you know, based on certain project like Gmail, I mean, uh, email application, e-commerce application, banking application. So based on some kind of applications here, we have to create our own exceptions here. Okay. As a developer, okay, I have to create our own exceptions. So those exceptions which are created by the programmer are called as, by the user are called as user defined exceptions or custom exceptions. Like arithmetic exceptions will be available to everyone. Array index out of bound exception will be available to everyone. Okay. Null pointer available to everyone. But certain exceptions, okay, it has to be specific to those kind of applications like insufficient balance exception. Insufficient balance exception is only valid for banking application that you have to create. If you're working around with e-commerce application, such as Flipkart, Amazon here, you'll come across an exception called as invalid cart size. Okay. Your cart size will be only 50. You can add only 50 products into your cart, not above 50 here. So you might experience invalid cart size. Uh, I mean, whenever you're working around with e-commerce application. So at times, you know, we have to create our own exceptions. So those exceptions are custom exception. How do you create an exception? You have to create an whatever is your exception name, right? You have to create it as a class. And that class should be a subclass of either exception class or runtime exception class. If you want to make the exception which you have created as checked exception, make sure it will inherit the exception class. If you want to make it an unchecked exception, inherit the runtime exception class and we have to invoke that object with the help of throw keyword and handle and give that suitable solution here clear that way we are supposed to handle it clear now imagine i am working on a banking application okay i'm working on a banking application so i'll tell control n i create a class and in some times if i'm working around with a banking application I will come across a exception called as invalid balance exception. So insufficient balance exception is my exception name. I create it as a class. Okay. Now I have to create this exception as an checked exception. 
okay so what am i supposed to do it here so if i have to treat it as a checked exception i have to inherit at inherit the exception class extends exception so i have to tell extends exception now insufficient balance exception will behave as a checked exception why because it is inheriting the exception class if the insufficient balance exception whichever class which i have created if it is inheriting the okay if it is inheriting the runtime exception class it will behave as unchecked okay so this is what we are supposed to do it over here okay now here after creating this respective exception over here i will have one bank here okay you will have atm okay you will have atm and you will have my main method wherein the execution will always start from okay and here i will accept scanner okay scanner s equals to new scanner of okay and system dot in because you are trying to accept dynamic input here so i create an object of scanner import at the last i will tell s dot close because i'm done with my job here so now your account balance is okay your account balance is 10k okay 10000 rupees okay so now you will tell uh sys out enter amount see here i'll just tell enter enter amount to be withdrawn enter amount to be withdrawn so that i will store it into a variable called as uh, amount here scan dot okay s dot next end okay if if bal amount okay is lesser than balance okay if amount is lesser than or equal to balance here okay you can withdraw successfully correct no if the amount which you want to withdraw is lesser than or equal to the balance available you can withdraw okay withdrawal successful okay else over here what am i supposed to do else it's a negative scenario so we have to invoke an object of exception here insufficient balance exception so throw insufficient balance exception so as soon as i tell throw insufficient balance exception we are getting an error here see just over unhandled exception type insufficient balance exception it means it's a checked exception and checked exception should always be handled immediately see here i get this respective data try block and suitable catch block okay and you can also have this is my else block and you can write it as in insufficient balance you can just write it as uh, not enough balance here okay not enough balance to withdraw okay this is all about the entire process here okay so that way we are just supposed to understand and try to work around with the content here so now when i execute the program here see here enter amount to be withdrawn 5000 see withdrawal successful because your account balance was 10000 no so you can withdraw successfully now your account balance is 10000 but you are trying to withdraw 15000 see not enough balance to withdraw okay that's it so what happened here as soon as your amount is not lesser than or equal to balance the control goes to the else block throw new insufficient balance exception meaning we are throwing or invoking an object of insufficient balance exception and that was handled with the help of try and catch block and we are giving this suitable solution here so this is all about the entire data here clear and you can also tell this s dot close okay if you want you can write it or you can just ignore it this is all about the entire process here clear as they guys okay this is a simple simple part which we are supposed to understand here okay and now okay if i make it as a checked exception okay if i make it as an unchecked exception what am i supposed to do i have to inherit the runtime exception class if it is runtime exception class it's a checked unchecked exception see it does not uh, you know force me to handle it immediately is it forcing me to handle it immediately not at all see when i execute it over here okay i enter amount to be withdrawn see 15000 exception in thread main meaning exception has occurred in main method and that is present in a package called as custom exception okay insufficient balance exception is the exception name and that is present in a package called as custom exception 
and that is present in line number 21. 21 is the line number which is giving an exception. Okay. And then you can handle it. Okay. How do we handle it? With the help of try and catch block. So with the help of try and catch block, we are handling that respective exception. So now as soon as I tell some random data over here, I get it as not enough balance to withdraw. So that way we can try to do this entire process in a beautiful manner here. Clear? This is all about the entire process here. So in real time, as I told you here, but here I'm just making use of invoking an exception, handling it using try and catch block and giving the suitable solution. But in real time, we would have a proper web technology web page. Okay. At the back end, we will have Java wherein I would have created those exceptions here. And at the right instance, at the right moment, I will invoke it and I will handle that suitable solution here. Okay. So this is the importance of custom exception here. Clear? This is all about it, guys. Okay. So anyone having any confusions as of now here? Okay. How do we create a custom exception and how do we invoke it? Okay. With the help of throw keyword, right? So anyone having any confusions, guys, with respect to today? I mean, whatever we did now. Any questions? Okay, great. Okay, so we just got the basic idea about uh, what is exceptions and how we are supposed to do it. And there is one question here. Okay, uh, how do we, you know, uh, it can it inherit implicitly? Okay, your answer is no. Exception, you know, whatever exceptions you created here, you have to either inherit the exception class or runtime exception class explicitly. It's not that we we can do it implicitly here. That's not possible at all. Okay, so this is what we are supposed to do it. Now, I'll give you one instance guys. Okay, I'll give you one instance here. I just wanted you to tell me what will be the output over here. Okay, we have already done this. Okay, we have already done this multiple times. We have a class called as employee. Open curly braces, close curly braces. <clears throat> and every employee will have, okay, every employee will have a variable called as name okay it has a variable called as name and i am initializing with that uh, i mean with the help of a constructor so how will i do it here so i will just write it as string name and within the constructor i have to write this dot name equals to name here clear done so now i have another class okay i have another class okay it's not the same class here it's a different class i will have class test open curly braces close and i will also have my main method blah 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 i'll have my main method so i will create an object okay how will i create an object employee e equals to new employee of okay and i have to pass the name of the employee that is tom so when I tell new, what will happen here? A new object will get created. Okay, a new object will get created with the address 111 and E will be pointing to that respective object here. Correct? And then the non-static variable name would have got initialized to null here initially. And then slowly, slowly Tom goes over here. That Tom is passed over here and that name Tom will get stored into the current object's name. Current object is E. In that E, Tom will get stored here. And now when I tell SOP E dot name, what is the output I get? I get the output as Tom. Correct. This is what I did over here. And everyone knows this program now. Okay. So here, if I go back to my program, see, I create a class O and I created an object of employee only now. Yeah, perfect. So we have a class called as employee and it has a variable called as string, string name. Okay, and I will initialize it with the help of a constructor over here. Okay, I will initialize with the help of a constructor. This dot name equals to name here. So we have a class called as employee and we are creating a constructor. Uh, we have a class called as employee. We have a variable age and we are trying to initialize it with the help of a constructor. Now I have one more class called as test class wherein I'll also have my main method. Okay. So over here, I will create an object of employee. Employee equals to new employee of, and I pass the employee name as Tom. So now when I tell sys out e dot name, 
I can get the output successfully as Tom here. Correct. Sir, no problems, nothing, sir. You know, it was absolutely a easy program here, dumb program here, which we have already done it several times here. But what was the necessity I did it now? To, with some, something is there, no? That's the reason I have done this topic, no? Okay. Now imagine, as soon as I make this variable as private, what did you understand? What did you understand? Sir, everything is okay, sir. But since you made this variable as private, this name can be accessed only within the same class. You can do anything within the same class, not outside the class. So you will create an object of employee. You will pass Tom. That Tom will get stored into variable name here. Okay. But you cannot print it directly. You cannot print it directly. Why? Because it is private. So what is the alternative for it here? Okay. What is the alternative for it here? See, in my respective program here, I have e dot name. When I tell e dot name here, I will get the output as Tom here. See, I'll get the output as Tom because the access specifier is a default as of now. Okay. But as soon as I make it as private over here, so this variable name can be accessed only within the same class, but I cannot access it outside the class. Why? Because name is a private variable. So what do we have any other choice in order to access the variable here? Do we have any idea? Okay. How can we do it here? Any idea? <clears throat> okay, so there was an answer called a singleton pattern. Guys, don't get confused here. Singleton design pattern is to create only a single object. Okay, here there is nowhere I am talking about a single object here. I am just talking how do you access that private variable outside the class. Heard of something called as Java Bean class long back here. If the variable is private, we cannot access it directly, but we are making use of setter method to set the data and getter method to get the data, right? So with the help of a constructor, I am setting the value. See, I am passing Tom, that Tom will get stored within the variable. I am setting it with the help of a constructor, but I cannot get it. How can I get it here? Getter method. How will we develop getter method, guys? Simple. In order to generate getter method, it's a very, very simple task. How? Get what? Get name is the method name because name is the private variable that cannot be accessed outside. Get name is the method name. Open parenthesis close. Open curly braces close here. Right? And get name means it has to return that respective name here. Get name means he has to return the name to the caller. So name is the re uh, return statement. Okay, so what will be my return type string and that will be public, right? So how, what am I supposed to do in the program here? I will have a getter method. Get name is the method name. Okay, and I have to return the name over here. So what will be my return type string? Because the method is returning a string uh, uh, data and it should be a public method so that everyone can access it. So rather than telling it as e dot name, I will tell e dot get name over here. So when I tell get me, I will get the output here. See, just a moment. I made some mistake. Okay, perfect. So now when I execute it, I am getting the name, but in a different way. Clear. The reason what I did over here is, okay, see here, I will create a class called as age invalid exception. Okay, I'll create a class called as age invalid exception. Imagine you are working on an uh, RTO application. Okay, uh, you know, if you want to apply for driving license here, your legal age is supposed to be 18. You try to fill an online form here. Okay, if you want to apply for learning license, guys, learner's license here, okay, LL here, you have to fill an online application over here. And if your age is lesser than or I mean, lesser than 18, you're not supposed to apply for DL, right? You cannot. Your valid age for applying for DL is 18, correct? So I have created uh, a class with the help of an exception name. So I'm working on an uh, RTO application, okay, wherein I come across an exception called as age invalid exception. That I want to treat it as an unchecked exception. So I have to inherit the runtime exception class. So age invalid exception is my exception name. I created it as a class. And that class is inheriting the runtime exception class because it will behave as an unchecked exception. Okay. And then it will have, okay, 
a private variable called as okay private variable called as a uh, message over here see the same program okay i will have a variable called as private okay and here i will initialize it with the help of a constructor okay i will just create it with the help of a constructor so within the constructor it will accept a variable called as message and i will initialize it with the help of the constructor this dot message equals to message here so don't you think so that employee and this is very easy here and i will have a method called as get message method okay and he will return the message over here and what will be the return type the return type will be string and the method access specifier will be public over here got it this is all about it okay but now here if i don't write it as public here it gives me an error can you tell me the reason why can you tell me the reason why why it does i mean why it does not give it's not predefined okay see even in employee class and age invalid class it's almost same if i don't use public here it will work in get i mean it works over here in employee class but here it's giving an error here okay i should mind it see cannot reduce the visibility of inherited method from tobal blah 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 can you tell me what did you understand with this statement here I'll I'll give you the complete hint only I've given here. Okay, cannot reduce the visibility of the inherited method from throwable here. What does this statement mean? Any idea, guys? Any idea? Think, no, think, 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 think. What did you understand with the statement here? Do you all think so? We have okay. Do you all think so here? Every this class okay age invalid exception. is inheriting the runtime exception class a runtime exception class is inheriting the exception class and that is inheriting the throwable class so from the throwable class we had two important methods that is get message method as well as okay get message method as well as print stack trace method so once we write a get message method we are trying to override the method here so the access specifier should always be same or it should be of increased visibility sir how is this overriding sir guys get message method is a predefined method in the throwable class from throwable it is inherited to exception from exception it is inherited to runtime exception from runtime exception it is inherited to age invalid exception so that way we are trying to have a private variable initializing it with the help of a constructor and accessing with the help of getter method simple employee class we had a private variable we are initializing it with the help of a constructor and we are accessing with the help of an or getter method so that way if you want to create a custom exception you can just have a class that will inherit the exception or runtime exception class see both the classes have done it easy way optionally you can override the get message method also you can override what the get message method how by writing this entire logic here you will have a variable you will initialize that variable with the help of a constructor and you can call that particular method here okay and then okay i'll have a class okay imagine i'm working on a matrimony portal okay matrimony portal here matrimony portal okay so over here wait 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 i'll explain the entire program here okay i will create an object of scanner wherein i want to accept the dynamic input okay i'll just want to accept the dynamic input here so i'll just write it as system dot in over here okay so now here i'll just tell sys out enter age enter age that age i will store it into a variable called as okay s dot next in over here and i tell if age is greater than or equal to 21 okay for the legal age for a guy to get married is 21 right okay so yeah that's the reason okay he'll tell her get married soon okay get married soon her okay else what am i supposed to do here simple we have to create an object of age invalid exception okay we have to create an object obj equals to new object and we have to give some message that has to be displayed i will just give it as uh, have patience okay i just have it as i uh, just write it as have patience here okay 
so what is happening here i am creating an object of age invalid exception and i'm passing some suitable message over here that goes to the constructor over here and that will get stored into the current objects variable that will get stored into the current objects variable okay and after i create the exception i have to invoke that object of exception how with the help of throw obj and that can also be reduced in a single line no how can we do it in a single line also if you want to do it in a single line you have to just make use of this particular statement here throw this data this is all about it okay so now when i execute the program here see what happens over here okay so here age is the link okay so enter age i'll write as 22 see get married soon and if i just write it as uh, you know 12 see read out the exception here it is telling exception has occurred in the main method and what is the exception name age invalid exception and what is the message we have passed have patience okay so whatever i pass it over here as the constructor call that will be the message over here that will get displayed internally okay so now when i execute it over here so i get it as 12 see have patience and line number 18 is giving an exception my my program got terminated so we are supposed to handle it over here how do we handle the exception over here simple this particular line we have to surround it with the help of try and catch block okay try open curly braces write it down and you will have catch block and if you don't know the exception name you can write the super class exception always doesn't matter okay you can just write the super class exception and you can tell it as sys out have uh, i'll just write e dot get message okay i'll just write it as e dot get message method because we have overridden the get message method so i can just execute that program have patience uh, you are just you are not yet 21 you are not yet 21 so now when i execute it over here so i'll just write it as 12 see have patience you are not yet 21 so now when i execute it as 22 yes get married soon here so that way we're trying to do it in a beautiful uh, data here okay so this is all about how do we work on a custom exception so basically we have four pandas guys okay what is the first thing here you have to create and whatever is your exception name no create it as a class okay so you have to create a class with the exception name okay second you have to understand since all the exceptions are subclasses of either runtime or exception you have to decide you have to make this as checked or you have to make this as unchecked okay so now you'll make it as unchecked in this particular scenario you'll make it as unchecked you created a class with the help of an exception name and that's an unchecked exception and now you wanted to display some suitable value uh, solution see there is a variable called as message you are trying to initialize it with the help of a constructor and getter method see all the concepts you are already done with it we are just trying to recall it once okay and in the main class if it is greater than or equal to 21 okay you can get married if not you will invoke an object of exception by passing the suitable sub message here and that exception is caught by the reference e and i will get the expected solution i'll get the e dot get message meaning whatever message i have passed that will get displayed if you don't handle it over here okay if you just don't handle it over here see what will happen here if you don't handle it if you don't handle it and if you give the age as 19 see exception in thread main so it's telling age invalid exception have patience you're not 8 21 is the message and line number 19 so what are we supposed to do i have to just oh, you know write it as e dot get message when i tell e dot get message it means it just gives the small message about the exception if i give it as 12 have patience you are not at 21 okay so this is all about the most important topics here with respect to exceptions here okay so now tell me do you have any confusions in entire exception handling okay tell me do you have any questions with respect to exception handling guys oh yeah one answers from everyone any questions very good okay so this is all about the complete things which we have to discuss with respect to exception handling okay 
so we are done with complete of exception handling and i have given so many examples for custom exception okay i have given probably three examples okay so it's time for you all to start practicing exception handling okay now in an interview here okay i'll discuss a few interview questions on exception handling trust me it's interviewer's favorite topic okay exception handling is an interviewer's favorite topic here okay he can royally screw you on this particular topic for more than one hour okay he'll keep on firing questions you uh, questions at you that you'll all get bugged up okay so first of all okay he will ask the difference between error and exception he'll tell you difference between error and exception here okay so now here if we ask difference between error and exception here how will you answer sir error is a runtime in interruption which cannot be handled exception is a runtime exception which can be handled that one answer is more than sufficient error is a runtime exception which uh, runtime interruption guys not exception okay sorry error is a runtime interruption which cannot be handled we have to debug but exception is a runtime interruption which we can handle it. clear so in other words if they just ask you to explain what is an error over here okay you will just tell okay error is a mistake or an interruption which okay, occurs during the execution of a program during compile time due to syntax mistake due to uh, runtime when we execute a class without main method i have told you this this is just a quite definition about error but if they ask the difference you are supposed to answer it in a different way and you know what is exception as well right exception is an interruption or a, a block here, blockage here which stops the execution of a program it is an event or a block or blockage or an interruption which stops the execution of a program and the below lines of code will not get executed so what are we supposed to do handle errors cannot be handled exceptions can be handled as simple as that so how do you handle try and catch blocks sir okay try block is nothing but the critical lines which might give an exception write it in the try block and the solution oh if at all an exception occurs what am i supposed to do write it in the catch block okay and we have seen one try block having multiple catch blocks super class exception called as exception no uh, i mean uh, uh uh, I mean executable lines between try and catch block. Okay, all those. Okay, and then we also understood two important method. Get message will get the small message about the exception. Print stack trace will be the complete information about the exception. Okay, and then we also saw finally block. What is finally block? So finally block is nothing but okay any executable set of statements if we write it in the finally block meaning. The set of statements or set of instructions if we write it in the finally block that will get executed all the time okay that will mandatorily get executed all the time and very very famous interview question okay explain okay this is probably one of the most important questions in your interview explain final finalize and finally this is your question okay oh my god what is how will you answer it okay explain final finalize finally how will you answer it's simple final is a keyword that we can use it with a variable we can use it with a method and we can use it with a class what is final final is a keyword which we can use it with a variable which we can use it with a method and which we can use it with a class if there is a final variable it acts as a constant meaning we cannot reinitialize if there is a final method it cannot be overridden but it can be inherited but we cannot override final methods and final class cannot be inherited so that way you have to explain beautifully what is final just don't tell sir final cannot be reinitialized i'm going to kill you seriously okay final is a keyword which can, which we can use it with a variable method and a class okay final variable is a constant whom we cannot reinitialize final methods can be inherited but we cannot override but final class we cannot you know uh, inherit at all so we know what is final very good finally sir it's simple sir if we use it during exception handling okay the lines which we write within the finally block the set of instructions which we write in the finally block gets executed all the time irrespective of exception will occur or not the finally block will get executed all the time okay 
then what is finalize sir finalize is a method okay used during garbage collection okay finalize is a method used during garbage collection before an object is garbage collected meaning before an object is removed from the memory here the finalize method will get executed so what is finalize method finalize method is used during garbage collection that is when an object is getting removed when an object is getting garbage collected just before that finalize methods will get executed okay so this is what you are supposed to explain it beautifully in the interview perspective clear and we know what is checked exception and checked exception checked exceptions are compiler known handle immediately and they all will inherit the exception class and unchecked exceptions are compiler unknown we need to handle it but the compiler does not force us to handle immediately they are all sub classes of runtime exception class and you know what is checked there i mean the custom exception the exceptions which we create the programmer the user creates its custom exception and one more interesting point what is the difference between throws and throw again very very important throws see if there is a method and exception is occurring in that method and that has not been handled if i want to indicate the indicate to the caller that exception will occur and i have not handled i have to make use of throws keyword throws meaning it's giving an indication to the caller throws is a keyword which is used to indicate the caller about the possibility of an exception meaning the exception might occur in the method and it has not been handled that information that indication has to be given to the caller with the help of throws keyword i am going to achieve that and throw is used to invoke an object here exception is not occurring you are invoking that object or calling that particular object here okay so this is the job of throw keyword don't get confused with throws and throw throw is used to invoke an object of exception throws is an indication to the caller about the exception okay so this is all about exception handling okay exception handling here okay and learn the exception hierarchy also which i gave in the beginning of the exception handling class okay so this is all about exceptions guys and probably left out with collections files and threads okay so from tomorrow i would be starting with collections class okay so we are almost done with 80% of java 80% is done we are just left out with a uh, important topic that is collection is important files and threads also are important but comparatively not that important okay so yeah okay so this is all about the session guys so from tomorrow collections will be done and you miss out collections in order to complete collections i require about 8 days 8 to 10 days if you miss on one session also forget about attending the next session because you will never ever understand okay so this is very very important for you all okay so great guys okay so anyone having any questions with respect to anything anyone having any questions guys as of now any questions with respect to anything no perfect guys very good very good very good okay so esther is no tell upload it today okay i just i uh, was busy yesterday so i couldn't do it okay so i'll upload it today okay so great guys okay so we shall wind up a session for today and catch up tomorrow okay with collections topic okay so done guys okay so thank you all take care bye bye